Our paddle is pretty useless at the moment. Of course, it doesn't move. And we're going to fix that up now by encapsulating the logic over inside of paddle.js. I mentioned this uh, in the last part. Let's first of all, just start out to see how we can get the input for the X axis. So for this, I'm going to go ahead and reference this game input X, simple as that. And let's see what this does. So if we go ahead and move our mouse, notice that this will give us the position that we're currently in and notice that this is constantly repainting. So we can see the position of the mouse on the X axis. Now, the reason this is important is what we're going to do is say this X equals this game input X. And then based on the position of this, we're going to move the object. Let's just start out by leaving that as it is by referencing this X, what we're doing is saying that we want this to move at the position that we're currently at. The only issue is this is going to kind of overlap the side of our canvas. We don't want this to happen. We want it to stop at the point that the very end of the paddle on the left stops here and the same for this as well. So to do this, we just need a very quick if else statement. So let's go ahead and build this in and uh, see how we can get this working. So we're going to say if this X, so the current position of this object is less than this width. So the width of the paddle divided by two, then that means that we are at the end. So we're going to say this X equals this width divided by two. That's just going to halt it from going any further left than we need. So if we just go over there now, you see, I can't move this any further than the edge of the world because we're taking half the width of this and we're setting the X axis of the object to uh, the point that we need. So of course, uh, zero is going to be in the center. And then we want that to be uh, kind of half of that, half of that object's width, if that makes sense. Now, otherwise uh, we can handle the, the uh, case where it falls out just here. Uh, we can create another if statement just to tidy this up. We could say return and we could create a new if statement. You could create an if else, whatever you prefer. We're going to say if this X is greater than this game width, because of course now what we're dealing with is the entire width of the game. And we're going to subtract the width of the object divided by two. So we're doing it in the same way. Uh, but of course, just the opposite side. Now, in this case, this means that we have gone past uh, what we should do. So let's just log out test here just so we can see this working. So this is all good. We can move this around, hit this side as soon as it reaches just there, then that's going to go ahead and log out test. So we just want to basically limit it as we did before. And we want to set this X to the game width, like so, subtract the width of the object divided by two. And we can go ahead and return there just in case we do anything else down here. Now, the reason that this works, like I said, is because we already know the uh, end of the world on the X axis is zero, but it's a little bit more difficult when we get to the end here because that is the width of the world. And notice that if I go ahead and resize this and I try again, it still works in exactly the same way. So that's just limiting the paddle movement uh, to inside of this world. Hopefully that makes sense. Now that we've done this, we can look at adding the ball and placing it onto the paddle.